Jane. Jeff, thank you. There was a major technical issue Wednesday at the country's largest tech convention. A blackout hit the CES in Las Vegas. The lights were off for roughly two hours. Security had to evacuate visitors during the outage. For more on what did see the light of day, CNET editor-at-large Brian Cooley joins me now from Las Vegas to discuss the latest automotive technology on display. All right, so Brian, Toyota introduced the e-palette this week that will bring businesses to customers. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, it's a crazy idea, but I think it's got some real sense to it in the future. Right now, we're trying to solve for a better way for us to get in our vehicles and go to businesses a lot, right? They have flipped it on its head and said, what if we put the businesses on wheels, figure out where they'll be most in demand the next day or even later today, and take them there? It turns transportation on its head. So imagine a, a really hot pizza shop that opens up in your neighborhood for a couple hours or a place that has just the right kind of athletic shoes you're interested in, cruises neighborhood by neighborhood. It's, it's out there, but they say it's going to actually be operating at the 2020 Olympics. Wow, that is fascinating. Meantime, Nissan unveiled something perhaps even more amazing. What is the company's goal with Brain 2 vehicle? Yeah, this is really getting out even further in the future. The idea is you might wear a sort of a cap that I tried on. It's got all these sensors that touch your scalp, and they can read brain waves. That in itself is not too unusual. But they then take them and connect them to the car. So if you're driving yourself, the car might pre-brake or pre-steer a little bit because it knows that you're about to, even before your hands and feet react. And we know that drivers have physical delay in their reactions. Or if you're in a self-driving car, this would be a way for you to communicate with it. Like, let's say you're looking out the windshield. You want to make sure the self-driving car sees that kid over on the, on the sidewalk there. There could be a little mind meld of sorts where it gives you more confidence that the self-driving car is going to do a good job and drive safely. It's out on the edges of technology, but they're not kidding about it. Wow, that is incredible. Um, Samsung is getting yeah. into the auto industry by connecting your technology to your car. What are some of the features of these products? This past fall, Samsung bought a company called Harman. Some of us may know it for Harman Kardon Harman Audio, which is in a lot of cars, but it's a much bigger company than that. They are the number one maker by model of electronics in vehicles worldwide. They put a ton of electronics in cars that we all drive. Samsung bought them, and now they say, look, we have roots in connected car with this acquisition. We already are in all kinds of people's pockets with our mobile phones, and we sell a ton of smart connected appliances and smart home gear with their smart things platform. They make the argument that they are now better positioned than any company in the world as of this week to connect your homes, mobiles, and cars in a seamless ecosystem. And I got to say, it's a credible claim. Well, are there concerns that drivers could get distracted using that? Yeah, sure. This has to be managed carefully. And one of the ways you would do that in the vehicle is to make it very gesture-based, very voice-based, things that we see all over this show this year, especially voice, so that you're in a dialogue with the car as opposed to touching and pressing buttons and looking at things a lot. That's clearly an issue, uh, an issue that they'd have to tackle. But I think we have the tools in the tech industry. They have to be deployed in a smart way in the vehicle, of course. Absolutely. And Ford is partnering with the Waze Navigation app to get people the most efficient directions into their Ford vehicles. What's significant about that? Well, this is the first time that a car maker has said, we officially support the Waze Navigation app in our dashboard. They usually use Google or their own navigation or maybe Apple Maps, depending what kind of a phone you have. But in this case, Waze is so popular because it's crowdsourced. And it figures out, based on what we all tell it, where to route traffic to get away from traffic jams. The controversial part is that often means traffic gets routed down little quiet side streets where the neighbors used to enjoy a very calm neighborhood. Now all of a sudden during certain times of the day, flooded with cars because Waze has figured out with our help, hey, that road's open, let's send traffic over there. So for a car maker to get involved in a controversial navigation app like this is kind of cheeky, but Ford is the first one to do it, and many millions of people love Waze, so they're going to get some traction with it. Well, a lot of fascinating things there in Las Vegas. CNET editor-at-large, Brian Cooley. Yes. Brian, thanks.